Hello, I'd like to talk to you about some research we're doing in Lyon in France, looking at the multidimensionality of rhythm and whether we can find separable components of rhythmic abilities. So when you listen or play a rhythm, something like this, There's obviously a lot of different things happening in the brain. So you're, you're perceiving, you're producing, you're extracting a beat, you're, you're using your memory, you're detecting any deviations, and you're internally generating a beat as well. And so in the literature, there seems to be a distinction between perception and production on the one hand, and beat-based rhythm and memory-based rhythm on the other hand. So when I say memory-based rhythm, I mean rhythm tasks, for example, that, that make you use your memory to be able to do. So um, reproducing a rhythm from memory or, or telling if uh, two different rhythms are the same or different. Whereas a beat based rhythm is more um, synchronizing or detecting alignment more of a smaller time scale. So in terms of perception and production, there have been case studies in the literature which show um, participants with impaired synchronization but intact rhythm perception and vice versa. So impaired rhythm perception but intact rhythm production. And in large testing batteries so using the same materials, there are different patterns of correlation and non-correlation. So the perception and production measures are not always correlated. Um, and different research has shown a separation between memory-based and beat-based tasks as well. And it's been suggested that this separation could be based on a neural uh, specialization of the brain for the different time scales. So it might be that the cerebellum is specialized for sub-second time scales, so really precise millisecond level precision for synchronization or detecting misalignment, for example, whereas maybe the basal ganglia are specialized for suprasecond time scales, so remembering a rhythm over a long time period. So in the current study, we wanted to look at this a bit more closely and see if we can observe evidence for separable rhythmic competencies. So we focused on just two distinctions between perception and production and between beat based rhythm perception and memory based rhythm perception. So we ran nine tasks across different test batteries on 31 participants. So I'm going to show you what we did. So for our rhythm test, we used the production task from the Bastel. So we had unpaced tapping, pace tapping to a metronome, pace tapping to two different types of music, um, and synchronization continuation, as well as the anisochrony detection task, which was a beat-based perception task. So for the production tasks, we had participants tap on a tablet. So um, they use they use the microphone to record the taps for the good precision. Um, and then we also ran a beat-based advantage test, the BBA, where we had participants listen to three rhythms. The first two were identical, and then they had to decide if the third was the same or if it was different. So this is our memory-based rhythm perception task. And then we ran two tests from the Burgundy Best Musical Aptitude Test, so a synchronization task and a metric regularity task. So I can play these for you in the questions if you're interested, but the synchronization task was just telling if a complex rhythm was in sync with, with itself or not. Um, it's a nice test with a, a good spread of um, scores. But the metric regularity test, um, we actually got ceiling performance on this just to say if a rhythm was regular or irregular. So we didn't, we didn't use this in the end in the analysis. But this is beat-based rhythm perception, and um, we also use the beat alignment test from Iverson and Patel, and we use an adaptation from the BASTA. Um, and for this, you just have to tell if um, a triangle superimposed on a rhythm is in, like, is it is aligned or not aligned. So this was also beat-based rhythm perception. And then we ran questionnaires, um, the Barcelona Musical Reward questionnaire, and a few other questions as well. So I'm going to show you the analysis that we did. We actually ran a perception only and a perception and production um, PCA, but I'm just going to show you the perception and production. So for the perception values um, for the BBA, the BAT, the BMAT sync, we use D prime, which is a measure of sensitivity to the signal. So higher, higher scores are better. Um, and for anisochrony detection, we had the, the threshold of change detection. Um, and for all of these values, we, we reverse them if they were opposite. So always the, the higher values are better. So for the production tasks, we use a measure of motor variability, the coefficient of variation of the inter-tap interval. 
Um, and just to kind of um, tell you quickly, in the perception only PCA, we actually did find a distinction between the bit based perception task and the memory based perception task. So um, this was nice, but I'm going to focus on the perception and production. So we actually found three dimensions from the perception and production PCA. The first dimension corresponded to tapping precision and beat alignment, um, as it correlated with all the tapping tasks, as well as the bat. The second dimension was more beat based rhythm perception because it correlated with the bat as well, the BMAT sync um, and the anisogony detection task. And then there was a third dimension, which was only for the memory based rhythm perception um, as it correlated with the BVA, the same different task. So that's nice. So then we did a hierarchical cluster analysis um, to see how our participants were within these dimensions. So you can see down here, you have the tapping precision and beat alignment dimension. Um, and this is a zero point up here. So everything below the zero point is not so good um, at tapping and everything above is good. And the same with the beat based rhythm perception up here. So this is a zero line and everything above is good and everything below is not as good. So um, you can see here that we've got kind of this outlying group um, of really poor tappers. So these participants were particularly bad at tapping. Um, and then down here, you've got your poor perceivers. Um, there were more, they were worse on the, on the tap, on the, sorry, on the perceiving dimension, um, as well as the memory based um, perception. I haven't shown you the third dimension here. And then we have a cluster of participants who are just good at all the tasks. So they're good at perception, production, everything. So if we have a look at the individual tests here, so this is the motor variability. Um, so the, the lower the score here, the worse they were doing, the less, the more variable they were. So you can see there's only four participants in these um, this poor tapping group, but they're, they're quite variable and they're very bad at, at tapping. But if you look at their perception results for BBA, BAT, <clears throat> BMAT, SYNC, they're, they're quite okay. They're, they're not doing too badly. And for anisochrony detection as well, um, they're, they're, they're quite good. So they seem to be selectively bad at the, at the tapping. Then you've got your poor perceivers. Um, so they're doing quite badly on the BBA, the BAT, and the BMAT sync, um, and quite badly on the anisogony detection as well. But for, for the production, they're, they're quite good, maybe with the exception of unpaced tapping. Then you've got your group of good rhythm um, just in general. So you can see they're really, they're really consistent with their tapping. Um, they're good at the, the perception tasks and the anisochrony as well. So in terms of significance, we found significant effects of cluster for the synchronization continuation task, the pace tapping to music, pace tapping to metronome, and also the unpaced tapping. Um, and in terms of perception, we found significant effects of clusters for the BBA and the BAT as well. But for anisochrony detection and BMAT synchronization, there were no significant differences but, uh, for the cluster. Um, so just to wrap it up, we just we found three primary dimensions that emerged: a dimension of tapping precision and beat alignment, a beat-based rhythm perception dimension, and a memory-based rhythm perception dimension. And in terms of the cluster, we found general distinction between those who performed well across all of the tasks, so they were, they were good in general, and those that selectively performed poorly in production or perception. And for our, for our four poor tappers, one was also a poor perceiver, two were good at memory-based at the BBA, the memory-based task, and one was a good beat-based perceiver as well. And just a side note for our perception-only PCA, our clusters were um, poor perceivers in general, and participants then who were selectively good at the memory-based tasks or selectively good at the beat-based tasks. So that was nice too. So in terms of future research, we really suggest you include multiple tests. So uh, a test of rhythm synchronization, such as one of the pace tapping tasks, a bit-based perception task, such as the BAT, and a memory-based perception task, such as the BBA or a rhythm reproduction task. And if you're really short on time, the bat does seem the most sensitive because it contributed to, contributed to both the tapping precision and the beat alignment dimension, um, sorry, as well as the beat based perception. So it seems to be tapping into the synchronization as well. And the take home message, there appears to be multiple rhythmic competencies that are not necessarily related. So individual differences um, seem really important and could account for differences in the literature as well. 
Thank you very much. And let me know if you have any questions.